So I've had the X-T4 for just over a year now. I pre-ordered it as soon as it was announced and I received it a few months later with just a little delay due to the pandemic. I've had Fujifilm mirrorless cameras for several years now, starting with the X-T1 and the X-T10 and I was even in Japan for the launch of the X-T3 but I skipped the upgrade because I was still extremely happy with the X-T2. And in fact, if you're looking for an affordable camera today, the X-T2 is still a fantastic option and it's a camera that I use daily in my job and it's the one I'm filming on right now. But today I'm here to talk about the X-T4 and now after a year, I'm going to tell you my five favorite features that make me love these cameras so much. Now, Fujifilm are well known for the amazing colors you get out of camera, which is why many many people simply shoot straight to JPEG rather than shooting in RAW. And I'm often out with other photographers with cameras from all the other brands and they are always all amazed by the colors I get from my Fujifilm X-T4. Now, this is not necessarily a huge improvement from previous models, but the dynamic range on the X-T4 is now broader and I always feel I can get more details in highlights and shadows with the X-T4. In the vast majority of cases, I can easily recover three stops in post-production without degrading my images at all. And the colors are always preserved and beautifully rendered. With the X-T4, I got two new film simulations to play with, uh, Classic Negative and Bleach Bypass, and I found myself using them a lot in the past year. With street photography, I used to use Classic Chrome as the base for my photos, but before publishing my images, I always toned down the yellows in post-production, because I found the images to be excessively warm. But with Classic Negative, the colors shift to the cold side, and I prefer this a lot more. In fact, this is now the default simulation I set on my X-T4. Bleach Bypass, on the other hand, is a film simulation I like to use for modern architecture, but I also found it perfect for the photos I shot in the snow. And when I was photographing the snow in the park, I found that Bleach Bypass was giving me a very dramatic finish, almost black and white, but just with a hint of color. And that was conveying the cold really, really well. Now, if you haven't watched my snow video yet, go watch it after you finish this one. Now, with the first three generations of the XT series, we always had to use the same battery, which was probably the main letdown of the Fujifilm system. I had to carry around an extra five or six batteries when traveling because they wouldn't last too long. But with the XT4, things have changed. Oh boy, how much they've changed. The main test for me was when shooting time lapse. Now, time lapses are a little less demanding because the scene doesn't change much. So I was always able to squeeze some more photos out of the X-T4, probably around eight or 900. But that was pretty much an hour of shooting or less, which may not be enough when you shoot a time-lapse. But with the X-T4, I have been able to shoot a time-lapse for two and a half hours and still have 35% power left in the battery. This is how much it has improved. It's absolutely unbelievable. And in my time-lapse of the Tower Bridge Sunrise, that's exactly what happened. I stayed there for two and a half hours in the cold and while the X-T4 kept shooting uninterrupted I had to change the batteries on the X-T2 twice. And this, of course, has a huge benefit when you shoot videos as well, which is going to be my next point. I actually decided to purchase the X-T4 because I wanted to shoot more videos. And I skipped upgrading to the X-T3 but I had used it and I saw how many improvements were made to the camera on the video front. Now, I'm not a filmmaker, so I won't go into the technical details of the video features, but the X-T4 has introduced a new in-body stabilization based on magnets and has also improved every other aspect of the camera. For example, you can now shoot 240 FPS footage, even though this is limited to 1080p, and I often have fun with it. And then, of course, if you pair these with the great colors of Fujifilm, it almost makes shooting in F-Log irrelevant you can easily choose to rather film with the Eterna film simulation and avoid having to spend endless time color grading your footage. Now, I wish I had shot video a lot more in the past year, but in the few times I did, including for this YouTube channel, I always felt I made the great decision with the purchase of this X-T4. Now, one notable improvement with the Fujifilm X-T4 has to do with the autofocus. It still struggles a little when, when shooting video, particularly in situations with foliage in the background, but this seems to be the case with other cameras as well. I have seen 
big YouTubers vlogging with Sony cameras and still struggle with autofocus in the same conditions. But when shooting photos, the autofocus on the X-T4 is the best that Fujifilm has ever released. So much so that I actually started using it, while I was mainly a manual focus kind of guy with the previous cameras. And particularly with street photography, when you need to act fast to capture the action, I have come back home with a lot more keepers since shooting with the X-T4. The autofocus is always fast and accurate, so I feel I can rely on it rather than setting my camera in advance using zone focus for example. Now, if you're curious to learn how I shoot with both autofocus and zone focus, and uh, as well as my settings for back button focusing, I will release a couple of videos just about that. So this may be a good time to subscribe to this channel, so you won't miss them. Of course, I can't make a video about the X-T4 without talking about the big change in user experience that is the flip screen. Now, when the camera was first announced, I thought I would absolutely hate the flip screen. And while I don't necessarily love it now, I appreciate the benefits of it. I, I just wish it was sort of a double mechanism instead, where you could either flip or tilt the screen depending on the situation. For example, when, when shooting from the hip, I'd rather tilt the screen than having to look on one side with the flip screen open. But anyway, the flip screen is actually beneficial in a lot of situations. Obviously, it's great when vlogging, as you can see at a glance when, what is recorded. And it's a good improvement on the previous system when shooting with a camera down on the ground or high on a monopod. So in the end, I'm glad this has been introduced with the X-T4. But please, Fujifilm, consider a double mechanism. I mean, Panasonic does it. Now, if you want to see more of my X-T4 videos, this is now a good time to go watch my cinematic vlog in the snow, uh, the one I mentioned earlier, or all the other videos that I will link in the description below. But that's it. These were the five features I like about the Fujifilm X-T4 a year after the purchase. I hope you enjoyed the video and you will give it a like and then subscribe to the channel. But yeah, that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.